what not to do physically. So I'm, a, I'm coming from this from a food standpoint to begin with. So with our current understanding of the importance of nutrition, nutrient deficiencies and mineral imbalances in the development of di diabetes, these are the foods that I am taking off the shopping list. Okay. And I've talked extensively on this podcast about the roles each of these things plays in the development of diabetes. Go back and watch episode one through probably 15 that will talk all about um, iron and its role in the inflammatory cascade, all of the processed oils and sugars and what have you. But um, bleached, enriched, or fortifo fortified flour, okay, and this comes in the shape of breads, commercial breads, doughs, pizzas, cookies, cakes, pastries, what have you. All of these flours have a mineral profile that is conducive to inflammation. So hydrogenated processed oils, canola, vegetable, peanut, soybean, again, so many of these are almost unavoidable in a lot of commercial products these days. If it's coming in a box or if it's prepackaged during the freezer section, chances are it's got one of those oils in them. So these are things that we want to uh, avoid entirely if we can um, or, or significantly reduce. Same goes for added sugar and low quality artificial sweeteners. That kind of has a little bit more of a common sense aspect to it from, from a diabetes standpoint. Um, low grade mass produced meats. So talking about, and this has much less to do with, you know, oh, vegan, are you saying that vegan is good for diabetes? No, not at all. I'm talking about food quality, right? So low grade mass produced meats um, and all of the things that go into those animals before they are butchered. Um, anything processed, boxed, preserved, anything with dyes, flow agents, gums, things that you do not know what they do in the food or why they're there probably isn't a good indication for putting them in your mouth. So uh, I mentioned before free iron playing a huge part in as a source and exacerbating existing mineral deficiencies uh, in the body and how that can really, really disrupt cell physiology and how our immune system treats our body. Okay. So free iron, I think is probably the, my enemy numero uno when it comes to regulating food, um, specifically reduced iron, fortified iron, not necessarily the um, naturally occurring iron, like in meats, like in leafy greens. Again, look at the, or listen to those earlier podcast episodes about um, iron and the, the significance of how it's sourced and what it's complemented with. But um, the, the fortified and rich flour has got to go. Processed oils, right? Whether it be Crisco, you know, pure vegetable oil, canola oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, all of those polyunsaturated fatty acids that are in a high heat, high oxygen environment, they are full of free radicals that are major catalysts for uh, inflammatory responses in the body. Added sugar, okay? And I'm not, I'm not gonna out and out label sugar as an enemy in diabetes. I really don't think sugar itself is as bad as people make it out to be. But when you are adding it in copious amounts and the fact that the products that they are adding sugar to are typically already messed with so much from an ingredient standpoint, it's really, really not good for you. Whether it be like kids treats, like Gushers, fruit roll-ups, all of those, you know, kind of sweetened breakfast cereal, oh, all of it, no, no good. Okay. No good. Every, usually everything in those products, um, even, you know, soups, peanut butters, they are all laden with all of these processed oils, added sugars and sweeteners. Um, this goes for artificial sweeteners as well. Splenda, aspartame, erythritol, uh, sucralose. It's, people are always like, oh, well, you know, what am I supposed to sweeten stuff with? What about stevia? 
I don't personally use stevia. The only natural sweeteners I use are honey and maple syrup. Those are my go-tos. Um, naturally occurring, they've got really good mineral profiles, quality, as close to nature as you can get from the sweetening standpoint. Um, and if you do, you know, if you are so inclined and you want to use something, just don't overdo it. And then from the meat standpoint, so commercially processed meats, um, it's so ironic, you know, we talk about the bad things that, you know, you shouldn't be eating, uh, GMO crops, the hydrogenated oils, you don't want antibacterials or growth hormones added to your food, because then that means that you're, you know, you know, it's going to mess you up. But then we go out and we buy animal products from animals that were fed all of all of those things, right? So it's, you know, there is just like one one layer of one layer separating us from all of these terrible things that we ourselves are told not to consume, but we're consuming what consumes them. So we're just getting them in second hand. So cheap, really like mass produced meat. It's really, 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 really not great for you. And it's something that needs to be, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for grass fed. I'm always looking for, you know, local farms. If they have it, if you're someplace that you are fortunate enough to um, get your hands on those, those should be a priority over just like get as much meat as I can for the lowest price possible because, um, it's not just meat that you're getting. You're getting a lot of all the, all the extra stuff that's kind of in those animals. Processed prepackaged foods. Okay. TV dinners, frozen pizzas, lunch, you know, it's just the food, the food is so processed. So, um, propped up with so much added stuff. Okay, if you don't know what it is on the ingredient level or why it's there, don't eat it. Don't eat it. And you may, you may be thinking to yourself, well, Bowie, what am I supposed to eat? You really, you really have to get back to cooking your own food using whole foods. That's really the bet, my, my greatest answer. It is simple. It may not be easy for all of you, but you've got to get back in the kitchen and start preparing uh, your own food. And remember, I mentioned before throughout all of this, <clears throat> just because it's normal doesn't mean it's good for you, right? So let's remember that it's not normal to have every single piece of food that you eat wrapped in plastic, coming from another country, you know, spending days in transit to the shelves in your supermarket. It's not normal for an ingredient list for very simple products like a granola bar to take up the entire backside of the wrapper. Why are there so many things in such simple foodstuffs? Not normal to eat meals that contain zero fresh ingredients, right? Just because it's green does not mean it's fresh. What else is in the, the, the liquid that, you know, all of those um, preserved vegetables are are in, you know, it's like you have to, you have to think what else. And then it's not normal to have no, no role in the preparation of your food. So many people outsource their food prep and it comes at the cost of quality. And the, the food quality is what, in, you know, is what dictates your health. All right. So this is, this is the food perspective, right? From, okay, what I'm looking to take out of the pantry, what I'm looking to take off the shopping list. 